Interesting time now for Arizona to go long because Kentucky's not guarding the man taking the ball out of bounds, which means that if you break guys towards the basket, everybody's going to try to make the interception. Set a little screen and Simon or Bibby can go long. Who else but Simon? No foul! No foul! They're not going to foul him. It's only right. The ball's in his hands. A milestone victory for Arizona. Simon says championship. Tonight's Chevrolet players of the game, Miles Simon. All right, Nice Kick. So we're out here in Tustin, California with former Arizona Wildcat and college basketball legend, Miles Simon. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. I'm glad you guys could come out to my house. Beautiful day. You couldn't have picked a, a better time of year to come uh, to Orange County. Right. So we recently did an interview with you, and I heard you have a lot of shoes. <laughs> I have quite a bit of shoes, and uh, I'm excited to show you guys my collection. All right, let's check it out. All right, come on. We come into... This is what I'm going to call my man cave because it's just my shoes. As we come in here, it's about, I would say, a little bit over 250 sneakers I have total uh, in my collection. Um, most of them in here, some of them scattered throughout the house. I have them semi-organized. Uh, I got my all my Kobe's up here, um, all my Durant's right here. Uh, just straight basketball shoes that are like kind of exclusive, like Hirachi, some old Air Max up tempos. Barkley 180s, um, more Barkleys, stuff like that. Then I got the LeBron, LeBrons here. If you go down here, I have a pair of LeBrons that someone sent me, man, probably seven or eight years ago. And I could never figure out what the, the date on these shoes meant. 11-11-2005. And I, I couldn't find anything of what they meant or, you know, why they had that date on them and it has the the little initials right there on the inside of the toe. I put them on my feet one time. They're comfortable, very comfortable. One of LeBron's better shoes, but kind of kind of some exclusive joints right here. We got KD, who I love. I've worked Kevin Durant Skills Academies the last three summers, so I've got to spend some time around him. Um, got the scoring titles. I think I've worn these to hoop in one time, but these are great, great shoes. Um, but these are kind of special, and I think these will be. These are some KDs. But both uh, both shoes autographed by KD. Like I said, I've been fortunate enough to work Kevin Durant Skills Academy um, the last few years as a skill instructor. Um, so I was able to get these there at the camp and and have KD uh, autograph them. So maybe they'll be worth something someday. But maybe get them encased and put them in a trophy room if I'm fortunate enough to get one of those. But then, like I said, Kobe Four is probably my favorite Kobe. Definitely to play in. Um, the five, I didn't love as a basketball shoe, but I do have a, a, a colorway that's pretty exclusive. I've never seen anybody else with it. Uh, I think the color really, really stands out. I have a, you know, a couple, couple colorway of outfits that match with it, but these are pretty, these are pretty sick for at least as far as as far as looks go. You get the Grinches. Again, you see the the shoelaces are still attached, so they have not been have not been worn. But these are a great shoe, and I don't know if I want to wear them, but they look so clean. Kobe's my favorite player right now. I I grew up a Lakers fan. Magic is my all-time favorite player, um, but Kobe, he just to me like to toughness, grittiness. He's a winner. Um, you know, one of the best, obviously, ever play. And you see, I'm I'm, I'm rocking the Kobe gear. These maybe arguably one of the best basketball shoes to ever come out, the Kobe 4s. Super comfortable, low top, light. I'm big on traction. Um, when you're on the court not being able to slip, these have some of the best traction. I've kept them in pretty good shape. I don't have the box for these anymore. I will only wear these if I'm going to hoop on a court that I know is not like super dirty. That's a pretty clean court and uh, you know that they're not gonna get too scuffed up, but I've kept them in good shape. I've actually had them for like, I don't know when these came out, four or five years ago. I think kind of my pride and joy is pretty much strictly almost all Jordans uh, on, these, on these two racks. And if you're able to turn around behind you, these are kind of my everyday go-to shoes. They're straight, pretty much straight Air Maxes. I love, I like to wear sweatsuits. I like to wear shorts and t-shirts. I throw on Air Maxes uh, with those things or even a pair of jeans and a polo, dress it up a little bit. And then we, as we go down, we got uh, a bunch of trainers, Lunar Vapors, um, 
Lunars are some of the most comfortable shoes that I wear now. And then uh, a bunch of Air Force Ones on, on the bottom rack. All right, so let's go back to your pride and joy. All right. And like kind of the, the caveat with my Jordans, and I know there's exclusives and people like to see them, but I don't like to get my shoes messed up. I have a real thing like with scuffs and scrapes and stuff like that. These 11 snakes, I've only worn them one time to the movies with my wife, that's it. That's it. And then they went right back in the box, but I haven't seen too many people ever with, with these. Uh, probably pretty hard to get. We go up here, some retro 13s that are pretty sweet. Again, if you take them out of the box, clean as a whistle. Never been worn, never touched the ground yet. The Jordan 3s that were re-released. Black and some black cement. You know, classic right there. People love those. The cool grays. And I'm making a mess, but never been worn. I mean, I've had them probably for over a year. If I do wear a pair of shoes, when I take the stuffing out or the insert, uh, when I put them back, they go, the insert goes back in and they go right back in the box and they come back in the garage. And I kind of been doing that since I was young. Uh, I started collecting, I really started collecting shoes when I was in high, when I was in high school, um, at Modern Day High School and, and uh, we were a Nike school so I started getting plenty of shoes when I was high school. It was carried on to college. I had it um, up to my ceiling in my apartment of just, you know, different, kind, different kinds of shoes. Uh, mostly basketball shoes when I was in college. You see this, the, the 11s, and, 11s and the 12s, right here, still never, never been worn. <laughs> you know, people think I'm crazy. I have a nephew that's in high school that he's come over and he'll just look at my shoes and he can't believe that I've never put them on my feet. You know, the white and black joints right here. I think my goal is I'm, I'm, I'm actually gonna have a son in a couple days. And so hopefully my keep my shoes fresh enough long enough that he can wear 14s and maybe I can pass them, uh, pass it down to him. Here are the Olympic Jays. I mean, these are, these are classics. Everybody remembers 92 and when Jordan brought these out, you know, you had to have them when you were a kid. Some Spiz Ikes. Love wearing, I actually have like pretty much almost a matching sweatsuit to wear with, to wear with these. Cool colorway, I like the, the little paint spots that he put with them. Um, we go on to these white and Carolina blue. 14. So they've definitely got some little bit of wear and tear to them. Uh, I like the colorway on them. I was a big Carolina fan growing up. Six Oreos. I got these at the, uh, I was a coach at the Jordan Brand Classic three years ago. I think it was 2010. And, uh, and they were giving these to the kids. And so I was fortunate enough as a coach to be able to, to score a pair of these. I've actually hooped in these pretty good, pretty good hoop shoe. You played and Air Max up tempos and foams and stuff like that. What does Miles Simon wear to play in these days? Oh man, the LeBron 10 is kind of my go-to shoe right now. Uh, super comfortable, cushiony, bouncy, light, uh, which I think is key. Past LeBron shoes have been really, really heavy and hard to maybe wear on a consistent basis, but these LeBron 10s uh, are an amazing shoe. The Mars Blackman uh, fours right here. I got a couple pairs of these actually. These I've actually worn to hoop in and walk around in. You see they still got, they got some dirt on the bottom. What's up, Jeremy? Hey, what's going on guys? Jeremy, I'm just walking my dog in the neighborhood. <laughs> I pop over. Give me one of my childhood uh, ballers. I loved watching. How you doing, George? Happy to see you, yeah. Hey, glad you could stop by, man. Heck yeah, I'm glad just saying, come by Miles Simon. We're in town playing the Angels, so I'm like, you know what? You know, to pop over. You know, sneakerheads can smell out like a collection, like, you know, 15 miles away. I, can I know smell you're this from the hotel. I can smell. I said someone's got fresh kicks in a garage somewhere. So one thing we noticed in your closet is you had a Ray Allen exclusive to it. And Miles, you have a Ray. No, Allen. I thought I thought about it. I said this guy's got to have something. He's played with a bunch of guys. He's got to have something good. Like, yeah. What's some pee you got from somebody? These these Ray Allens right here, the black and green, Sugar Ray editions. I think he was wearing them the year that they. Uh, that they won the title. Still clean as a whistle right here. Um, you know, stuffing still in them and everything, but great, great shoe. So Jeremy, is there anything you see in here that kind of impresses you? I tell you what, I'm always a big fan, like our boy DJ Ski in season one said, I'm always a big fan of that stuff that you just don't see around. I know I saw this one on the shelf, I saw that old box, and I think Miles talked about it, but I said, you know, 13s like that random colorway right there with that Carolina blue bottom. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate stuff. Well, I appreciate you, you know, appreciating me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> these ones too right here, these are, you know, I don't sleep on these. Um, oh yeah. The fours, white and chrome lace locks. I mean, just, you know, colorways that, that sometimes people sleep on, it's not OG. People say, ah, oh, I get the OG colorways. 
and then you know they're kicking themselves like me. Uh, we saw the Kobe Air Force One, the LeBron Air Force One Supremes, but these are kind of cool too. It's the Sheed Air Force One. You got the Rasheed Wallace rebound in the basketball. The colorway is pretty sick with the red, white, and blue, and then the pure leather um, Air Force One. I like these shoes. I kind of I wear. I still wear them every once in a while. Well, if you guys want to come in the house, I got one last pair that I've been saving for a long time. Still have the original box. These are uh, ones that are close to my heart and to all Arizona Wildcat fans. So we saved these. Everybody knows I won the national title in 1997 with Arizona, but still have my Air Max up tempos. Still the original shoe, but you see the Air, Ma Air Pocket is kind of giving, <laughs> giving out on me. Um, but the shoes that I wore in the national championship game made it to the cover of Sports Illustrated. Uh, one of the best basketball shoes that I've ever worn. Um, still save them, save them to this day. Don't know if I'll ever get rid of them or they just might decompose by themselves. <laughs> but, uh, but pretty sweet and, and something that, shoes that really mean a lot to me. And everything you have, you have the net. <laughs> yeah, this is the net from, uh, I believe from the, from the regional, not from the championship. I just have a piece of the net, but uh, my final four shoes, man. My final four Did you shoes. only wear those in the final four? I, I wore them uh, in the, I started wearing them either in the Elite Eight game, and then I wore them all the way through the, through the championship game. How about after the championship game? Did you ever wear them like on the I, playground? I, the, next, the next year to bring luck in the NCAA tournament, I wore them again in that NCAA tournament, uh, but we didn't, we only went to the Elite Eight and lost, but uh, have not been worn since then. And talk about a shoe that was big in Arizona, the Neon Royal Foam. I'll tell you the foam story of how we got them. So uh, our Nike representative, Eric Lautenbach, one of the best in the business. He's, he's the head of college basketball uh, Nike division now. And he brought them to our team in uh, our Sweet 16 Regional in Birmingham, Alabama. And so he brought them pretty much to all the guys. And so these, the blue foams, they hadn't been, even Penny hadn't worn them yet. And so we had them before Penny Hardaway. And so I wore them in practice, but they were, too, like I told you earlier, traction is big to me. Cause I'm a, I'm a hard cutter and hard planner and they were too slippery on the bottom. So I didn't wear them. But Mike Bibby, he was like, forget it. He's like, these are hot. Nobody has them. I'm wearing them no matter what. So Mike Bibby got the notoriety of of really wearing those shoes, but everybody on the team had them. But I think everybody had a comfortability with a different shoe at that time. And then to make a long story short, uh, when I played in the NBA, my one year in the NBA, I played with the Orlando Magic and I played with Penny. And Penny said, actually us wearing those shoes and or more importantly, Mike Bibby, uh, helped the original launch of those shoes because everybody saw them before Penny wore them. I think he was gonna wear them in the playoffs that year. And, uh, but we had worn them before, before Penny or anybody uh, um, had them. 